Hi, Happy New Year 2019. How are you? Did you enjoy your New Year's Eve? Well, mine was very quiet and I so happily um, accepted it because it was raining all over in Jakarta, cats and dogs. So it was the right thing for me to do and that was to stay home and in my bedroom. I enjoyed it so much though. So anyway, uh, this is my first video that I'm going to do from my laptop because I still haven't come up with any new iPhone as yet. Uh, I make do with whatever I have, all right? So uh, in March, it will be five years that uh, my husband is gone and uh, I just would like to share about this experience with you since I noticed that on the analytics that the story of uh, how I met with my husband is actually quite uh, popular so uh, it looks like you'd like me to tell some personal stories. Since I don't do the standard format of uh, blogging, like makeup all the time, or clothes, or showing the pet, or the car, or the traveling. So I would just like to talk with you like this, as it is again. With time, I hope I could improve. I know they say that, no, you don't need the right equipment. So I'll just make do with this laptop. And after all, it is a Mac laptop. I shouldn't complain. And there it comes again, <laughs> my fan. So um, as I was saying, somehow I, Feel that there's a transformation going on within me slowly slowly but especially this last one year living in Jakarta knowing psychologically that I have come here to live or to stay put although I still have my things like I mentioned already in my previous video that they are in the storage in Milan which I would love to sort it out as soon as possible because I really have to go on paying every month. But let's tell one thing at a time, all right? So um, five years being a widow. First of all, I feel now that it is time for me to be me again in other words that i cannot keep on acting like i'm still this wife of pietro even though officially yes absolutely officially i'm a widow absolutely but i cannot think anymore in tandem of that i have to think now for myself by myself and from within myself, no more that habit of always having to think there is somebody next to me that I have to also consider. I am alone, I am me. Yes, I have a daughter from my previous marriage to a German man, but she lives in New York and she's ultra independent, super independent, so I have no responsibility on her education or, or, or job because she's graduated, she has an uh, independent job. So that's out of my responsibility and I thank God for that and she turned out to be an amazing, amazing daughter which I'm, I, I just find myself flabbergasted how to have this daughter that is so amazing. When I say these things, not to brag, but I share with you just to inspire how life is beautiful, regardless of our ups and downs, 
because that is part of life. But we are equipped to um, overcome this difficult situation if we have the right attitude. First of all, is just try, try to stay calm. And then slowly, slowly, even sometimes effortlessly, things just come and make you do the right thing. It's there, the path for you to, 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 to step on or to take. As far as I'm concerned, that's what's been taking place in my life. So anyway, as a widow, I have to admit, because I'm not an angel, I am a human being, being married to an Italian man, traveling all over the world and living in other countries for his job, no children, there's always bound for a guy to be attracted to you, even though you are married. Let's admit it, okay? There are always guys that are attracted to you and then like to have an affair with you, even though you're married. So anyway, fast forward. My husband died. I kept quiet because there were like a few guys who like to contact me by phone, by message, texting, etc. But so happened, I was living in Jakarta, just visiting at that time. My husband was in Milan where he passed away and his sister was there because he was supposed to go out with his sister that night. So luckily his sister naturally had to check on him because they were supposed to go out. So anyway, I'm jumping all over now my story. Back to the to the to the to the topic that I, I like to bring here as a widow. So uh, I kept quiet. I kept quiet. Nobody knew that my husband had passed on or had passed away. Nobody knew. My husband passed away in March 2014. And then suddenly in October 2014, one of my admirers contacted me out of the blue. Out of the blue, he contacted me, so I responded to him. And of, of course, I said to him what had happened. Uh, so he was so cavalier, let's say. He said, look, I am busy now. I have to work. That was in November, in October, late October or November. Um, but I would like to come and visit you in Milan in February. He was in England. He was an Englishman, which I was very, very fond of and much younger than me but he knows how much older I, I am to him. So anyway, he said he would come in February. So from that November, late October, we were Skyping each other until New Year's Eve. Until New Year's Eve, we were again going on Skype, but I went on earlier because I had nothing more to do but he had some, uh, some uh, what do you call, some errands to do. So I waited. Then, a little bit too, too long, I don't know, somehow, it wasn't before midnight anyway, even though we had a one hour difference between Milan and England, all right? I wouldn't specify the place where he lives. So anyway, I decided just like that, that I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready because my husband wasn't even gone for one year yet. What am I doing, Meta? What am I doing? So I just decided to leave Skype. 
and he came online. Hello, 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 looking for me, asking me, looking for me. But I didn't go on the line anymore to speak to him, even to explain, which was not very nice of me. But I got nervous, I got cold feet, because it was like I was encouraging him to have a relationship with me since he was coming anyway in February. So I got cold feet, I just left cold. I just left him cold, which wasn't nice of me, really. It wasn't nice. It wasn't fair because he was a gentleman. So anyway, so that was one man that was going to be my man, let's say. Then another man is one that, that I met on the train from Geneva to Milan. I just uh, met my daughter in this place in the resort mountain to meet her for Christmas holiday, but we didn't have the Christmas day there. We met around, was it 18th of December? She flew all the way to Geneva from New York and then took a train to this resort. I forgot the name again. And it was like St. Moritz, but it's not St. Moritz. And then I came by train to that place. Oh, it was so beautiful. I loved it. I enjoyed it so much, especially knowing that I was going to meet my daughter at this resort. But she was going to be one day late, so she just told me that, you know, to wait there one day because she's moved already the hotel and everything and the spa and everything. And uh, so anyway, so that was it. Uh, I met her there. It was fun. We got together for three days. And then she told me that uh, uh, she will go to Geneva again and I can go back to Milan. But she will join me for Christmas in Milan. After which she will come back to Geneva to be with friends again for New Year's Eve, which was fine with me. Perfect arrangement. So anyway... Um, what happened? Yes. So on the train to Milan, you know, it was already full. I was late. I got on the train and um, sat next to this distinguished man. I didn't know whether he was Italian or Swiss because he di he doesn't have that Italian classic look or classic Italian look and we got talking we got talking actually I didn't have the desire to have a you know chip chat because I was so satisfied with the time that I was spending with my daughter that I was all you know filled with joy looking forward to having her for Christmas in Milan so uh, anyway, he started talking, but I didn't really uh, get into it. And then he tried again and tried again. We, in the end, we got talking because so happened that he's, he too was, in the, was an engineer or is an engineer like my husband was. The only difference is he was a mechanical engineer. My husband is civil engineer. So we got talking, 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 and then he started saying that he's a married man, he's got three children, and uh, one son, and that one son was one of the uh, goalkeeper of, I wouldn't say the name of the football team in Italy, all right, because then you can Google. <laughs> so, and then his two other daughters, one is artist and one is married, happily married, you know, but they are so, they are well-to-do family because he is, he is one uh, owner of uh, many, many apartments in Milan at one time, but not anymore. But you can see already from the way he talks, I could already... Uh, distinguish the Italian uh, level of society because of my life there for many many years so I could now see which is which has class 
which is a little bit on the lower side because of their language as well and the words that they use so anyway he was a distinguished guy so it was nice so he said goodbye i went home and then not uh not have i entered my apartment my telephone rang already and it was him and that was it okay no problem i was excited because tanya was coming in three days time something like that and then the next day he called and the next day he called and then after he called again he said merry christmas because on the 28th he's going with his whole family to their chalet because he has owns a chalet in uh, saint moritz in switzerland so he's going to wait to be away until 6th of january okay so i said okay so anyway in the meantime my daughter came so we celebrated Christmas together and then we visited my Italian best friend who lives with her boyfriend or with her partner or companion for many, many years already together. So Tanya and I, we went there and then we just had a good time and suddenly my phone rang and I saw it was him calling and I remember very well my daughter said, please answer the, call, the telephone and I knew I didn't feel like having anything, you know, or be having a, him as a friend because I was just happy already having my daughter there and I don't I don't I didn't have any intention or any desire to go with anybody. But I picked up the phone and then he so he was giving me the, 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 the sweet talk, the usual men when they're still so very interested in you. So okay, that was nice, good, then that was it. Fast forward, Tani already left for Geneva. She celebrated the New Year's Eve in Switzerland. And he, he called me after 6th of February. 6th of February, he invited me for tea first for coffee. Okay, good. That was like 4 o'clock. But on the way to, the, to have tea, um, his, he hit somebody with his car. So we had to get off the car and then, you know, trying to, typical in Italy, you know, you know, out and this and that, talk and shout a little bit, but he wasn't that kind of man. I was impressed with him for being so composed because I don't usually see Italian men composed. They always just, you know, go berserk right away. So he impressed me already with that. He was gentle, he was sweet, and then from that moment on, he would start to call me and then he would even you know, give, I don't know, read, read a poem over the phone because, you know, he was a married man, so he wasn't free to meet me anytime. Apart from the fact that I live in the south of Milan and he lived in the north of Milan. To cross that city is a bit, you know, being a married man with three adult children who depend on him and adore him so much that every half an hour, there is always a call from one of the children looking for him or talk, talking to him or needing his company. So anyway, so, so until one day what happened, maybe one week later, what happened? I don't know what happened. I didn't hear from him anymore. I didn't hear from him and now I was thinking, this is strange, this is weird. Is he playing game with me, you know, because he knows that I'm very vulnerable, vulnerable this moment because I'm my, my God, you know, I'm, I just lost my husband and I was still very uh, disoriented with life because my husband died suddenly. He wasn't sick. He was a healthy man, even though he had his health problems, but he wasn't sick. So, you know, I was caught off guard on all fronts. So my mind was all, you know, uh, uh, scattered. But I was so glad because my house was rented right away by this German family. So financially, I was all uh, uh, sorted. But I made a mistake because they asked for four years contract. I gave one year. And they asked for two years. I gave one year, every year which was a big mistake that I made. You see, this is life. Because I wasn't sure whether to go on living in Italy or to go back to Indonesia. I, I, I couldn't come up with an answer. So I just decided to 
rent my house here in Jakarta for one year, which was a mistake because afterwards they had to leave for Germany. Had I accepted the four-year contract, even though this family left, the company would have paid me for four years because in Jakarta they pay contract of the house at least for two years lump sum, not three months or one month or one year, but two years minimum. I don't know today. Today may be much more straight. Hi again. I had to stop because it started raining and my housekeeper had to get the chairs off the balcony and move to where I was sitting and they had to close the blind. So I, I moved here, but it's a bit dark on this side. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. I haven't switched on the light, but I hope this is sufficient as light. And uh, okay, as I was saying, so anyway, so this man was really courting me but to cut the long story short, after five months, nothing happened because I, I didn't want to have any involvement whatsoever more than just having dinner or meeting or calling or texting until my husband's one year's anniversary um, from his uh, demise. Okay, But even after March 21st, nothing happened because suddenly also his wife got ill so it was the divine intervention that didn't uh, allow me to have a relationship with this man because as a matter of fact i have to confess he he was a man that i needed at that time since he was very fatherly and i needed a fatherly man i didn't need a younger man i didn't need a man that I have to be on the same, on a par with. I needed a man that I could look up to or who could guide me or who could just give me a tender loving care that I was accustomed from my husband. But anyway, it wasn't to be. So by June, I think it, it ended. And I have to admit it was hard on me because I got a little bit accustomed to his attention by calling me every day, you know and gentle and sweet and fatherly and he actually was going to buy an apartment for me near his house since the place i lived was too far for him to come and visit me more often even though it's the same city milan but uh, it wasn't to be and i'm so glad that it wasn't to be it even though it hurt me because i was uh, starting to have a strong feeling for this man i must say and then after that, I had another admirer, and he also called, and he, he, did, he doesn't live in Milan, but he came to visit me, so we had a nice uh, 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 chit-chat, having coffee together, because he came in the morning since he had to buy a sports car, which happened to be near my house, uh, that he had to use that as an excuse, because the first time he came to Milan, I refused to meet him. And the second time, he just said to me, look, Meta, you know, can you please meet me even just for coffee? Because, look, this is a destiny that I have to buy this sports car, which shop is near your place. So please, you know, just come over. You know, come over. I'm here now dealing with this guy. So please come over. So I did go. So that was nice. So that was it. And then after that, there was another one, another one, another one. But all by texting or by calling, nothing physical. Also, one I met on the plane from Milan to Amsterdam. Italian man, very sweet, very nice, very gentleman. Because when I uh, boarded, the plane was already... Um, uh, full I think with people and I think I was one of the late passengers so when I arrived he saw me and he took my trolley to help me to put in the cabin and in the compartment and uh, okay I said thank you and then I went to sit and I did again I didn't know that this man seat was next to me so we started talking and I must say he's the first Italian man 
who I find speaking English without an accent, without Italian accent. And he, he got the groove a little bit. And I like that, you know, because actually, I, basically, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a wild child. I'm a free-spirited person. So, you know, having this man who knows music, you know, who knows American music, you know, the Tamla Motown music, the Detroit black music, things like that. It was fun. And yet he was younger than me also, you know. But then again, he's married with two young kids. And we were chatting and we were, I said, you know, he, he, he said to me, come on, you know, I am stopping in Amsterdam. I'm going back to where I where my job is, I wouldn't mention the country, but I'm stopping in Amsterdam for a few nights. Why don't you stay here? You would be my guest and I will take you around Amsterdam. I said, cannot because my tickets already booked from Amsterdam to Singapore. And Singapore, I'm already booked at a hotel to stay there a night before I continue to Jakarta. But besides that, that's not the, the the only excuse. I wouldn't anyway. I just met the guy, even though he was he was he was you know I liked him because he was you know he had a flair, and I liked that. So anyway, we continued on chatting, texting, on WhatsApp, on Skype every day. Who he called me? It was hard because he was really really into me, and I wasn't actually, but. He actually swept off my feet because, you know, he would call me wherever he was. Let's say he was driving uh, in Milan, going to the airport. Or when he took a taxi from this country's uh, uh, capital city to another part of the country. Or he, when he fly to another country. Or when he was in a meeting. Or when he was uh, back home. He, he would call me, so he would keep me updated with every little, little event that he, 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 he attended or little things he did. So it was exciting. And actually, I didn't know when I'm going to meet him again, even though at that time I was fitting Jakarta. So it was like I was still going back to Milan. But then it got too much for me again. I don't know why, since my husband's death i am changing to a person that i never expected to be and that is to be turned off by men so easily amazing i never expected that that i am transforming so fast after my husband's death i am put off by men you know it's not their fault they're fantastic i love men okay but I can't. I don't know why. I just can't. It's not their fault. Yes, it's nice to talk, but then when they want to go further, I can't. I don't know why. So that's my story as a widow. Until there's another one also. You know? So to cut the long story short, 2017? Yeah. Yeah. From 2017, that's it. There was no one in my life that I was involved with as, as far as I could recall, all right? No one. So 2017, 17, nothing. 2018 for me was fantastic because there was no one whatsoever, even in texting. So I have to pat myself on the back because when I was married, you know, I had men friends, and it was easy for people to think that, oh, once the husband, you know, died, she's going to marry soon, or she's going to be involved with someone, or she's going to live with somebody. And it's not true. Can you believe that? It's not true. And now five years in March, I don't have a boyfriend. I don't live with no man, you know? And I feel great. I feel great, but it doesn't mean that I, I'm not open. I'm open to somebody that, that is right for me, but also that is destined for me still to have a relationship. If it's not, 
I am already so happy and fulfilled and content with my life that I couldn't ask for more because I never even could imagine the life that I've had so far was going to be as amazing, as awesome, as highly interesting as what I have had so far. And this is not bragging. This is just sharing with you that life is not something that you have to uh, how to say it? you have to be obsessed about to own or to have or to experience because I've never been such a person never I never was a person who said oh, okay one day I'm gonna have this one day I'm going to do this one day I wasn't ambitious but I would take every opportunity that came my way that I find suitable for me that one, yes, I did. All right? Even to a point where when I was offered a job, I would say yes because I like the job even though I didn't have the qualification for it or the experience for it. But the boss just wanted me to work for him and I worked and I learned along the way and he was satisfied. Yet I never, never applied for a job i did once apply for a job <laughs> for a job one time at the chase manhattan bank long time ago and i was accepted but i didn't continue because i, I couldn't count fast enough <laughs> oh my god at that time so anyway but they accepted me and then uh, the rest of my life is i was always asked to work for them. So let's say there was as a dancer by a discotheque owner, two discotheque owners asked me to be their dancer and I was so young and I just came from London to Jakarta and I didn't have friends so why not? They gave me 250 US dollars a night, why not? It was fun. I was really a very pure, pure young girl. So I accepted. And then after that, a company saw me. They wanted me to work as their, their reception in this big, big office building that is just skyscraper here in Jakarta that was just open. So I accepted. And then from there, Hyatt Hotel saw me and they wanted me to be their uh, sales representative. So I accepted. And then from there, Hilton saw me. Hilton wanted me to be their guest relations manager, and they accepted. And then after that, I uh, formed my own uh, export-import company and interior decorating company, to put it briefly, okay, or concisely, or what they call that, to, yeah. So, uh, so, um, so that was my experience. And then after that, you know, I, I lived in Italy, married, and all that. But... I was married also before and living in Singapore and I had a daughter so my life has been so unconventional unconventional rich and uh, just amazing sometimes I look back I, I I never never expected that you know it would be like that so back to the topic and to the subject that I'm trying to put here on the video on my new year uh, video and that is that being a widow now five years I think I've made it through without um, having a what do you call that uh, a bad after effect let's put it that way I didn't end up with the wrong man out of uh, loneliness I didn't uh, fall into a, a relationship with somebody out of just wanting to have someone next to me I didn't so I'm very very proud that I have kept myself to myself until today and so uh, now I'm looking forward to be me now in this new year and that is to conduct life as me meta 
not Meta, the wife of Pietro. So this is what I'm doing now, and I am hoping that my business, that my online business, as little as it is, as uh, how to say, as um, discouraging as it looks, I'm going to to just, you know, to, yeah, march on, not march on, there's another word. You see, I'm always tongue-tied whenever I'm in front of the camera, plus now holding this mic. So uh, I'm doing my best. I love what I'm doing. I love where I am, except, of course, for a few things that I still have to sort out. Yes, I have responsibility still in Milan. And I have to sort out some things. But life is not perfect. You know, you never can have 100% smooth sailing a situation that you uh, face. There's always something. So I am happy as it is now. And I'm just doing my best to make life even more beautiful now. And I hope you too do the same. Whatever it is that you do, uh, at what stage you are in now in your life, always take the opportunity that you think would lift your heart. Don't listen to anybody else but yourself. Because whatever it is that you hear from other people, there's always some kind of bias in their evaluation or judgment on what you should or you shouldn't do. In the end, it is you who know yourself, who knows yourself. So you have to decide based on that. Okay, so, um, so far that's what I'm doing. And... Um, it's not perfect, but I am happy and I'm content and I'm fulfilled. And we are the 2nd of January, 2019. So again, I wish you a happy new year. And if you don't know me, I am Meta. I am Indonesian. I now live back in Jakarta, in my country, in Indonesia, after having lived in Milan, Italy for decades. Because my husband died five years ago, I tried to survive to continue my life there, but in the end, Jakarta called me back. Jakarta called me back in a, in a metaphorically speaking, because I also have this house and I'm more than grateful to have this roof on my head. And uh, it's a paradise for me to come back to. And I am beyond grateful for this. So, I hope you enjoy my channel or my videos and for the new viewers please subscribe if you find my story resonates with your story or your life or your personality and uh, also click that uh, bell button if you like to be notice notified when I uh, post my video. So in the meantime, I wish you the best of everything that makes you happy. Live life with love and grace. Ciao.